James McFadden and Brad Sweet from the front row. Then it's Brent Marks and Rico Abreu in row number two. Justin Peck and Brian Brown in row three. Tanner Holmes and Cy Lynch in row four. Brenham Crouch and Zeb Wise in row number five. There goes the HendrickCars.com pace truck into the infield. Salina High Bank Speedway, we got them racked, we got them stacked, and we've got the grandstands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. James McFadden out to the early race lead. Brad Sweet tries to run the bottom. They did move those tractor tires in right before this feature event rolled off. Sweet looks for a big slider to turn three and four, comes up short, and James McFadden will lead lap number one. McFadden leads his, leads his first lap of the Kubota Highland Race in 2024 season in the Roth Enterprises number 83 car. Sweet runs in second. Third spot is Abreu. Fourth is Marks and fifth is Brian Brown. Traffic going to come up in a hurry here in this feature event. James McFadden can already see the back of the field here on the high banks in Salina, Oklahoma. Brad Sweet just trying to maintain the pace of the 83 car till he gets to the back of the field. Those drivers finding a home around the top side of the racetrack here. Couple towards the middle of the field running down low, including Zeb Wise, Brennan Crouch, Parker Price, Miller, and Jacob Allen. There is Zeb Wise, and now there is James McFadden. Now about to be on the same straightaway as the back of the field. The first car he will encounter is the 52 of Blake Hahn. Traffic will certainly be the determining factor in who wins this race here tonight. Brad Sweet closing in maybe just slightly right there off of turn number four. That time by Sweet about a tenth faster as far as the lap times go. Brad Sweet the winner the last time four tenths race at Salina High Banks in 2018 with the Outlaws. Looks down to the inside turns three and four. Sweet might have found something on the bottom right there that time by. The last time by, it was actually McFadden now with the fastest lap of the top two, but Rico in third was faster than both of your top two drivers. Abreu and Marks closing in on McFadden and Sweet. Traffic up the road now. Chase Park now the first car that McFadden will encounter. Here comes Brad Sweet off the bottom. The bottom of the racetrack in turn number two looks to be pretty good. McFadden now hits the deck in turns three and four, tries to hit the inside of the racetrack, and he does. McFadden now trying to size up your lap cars here, see what he can do. Goes to the bottom and one and two, opens up the top lane. Here comes Brad Sweet. He takes the lead down the back straightaway. Brad Sweet takes the lead on lap number nine. And here comes Abreu now. Abreu looking underneath the McFadden for P2. James McFadden now coming back after the 49 car, back into turn number one. Sweet runs the bottom. He gets loose right there. McFadden with a run down the back stretch, back to the outside of the nap on a parts 49. Brad Sweet up the racetrack, McFadden crosses him up, and McFadden takes the lead back across the line. James McFadden back to the top spot, hits the bottom real nice right there in one and two, and pulls away a little bit from Brad Sweet. What a corner right there from McFadden. Now Sweet, he gets into him, they get together. McFadden flips out of the ballpark in turn four. The wing flies off and he is out there in the cow pasture. James McFadden, after contact with Brad Sweet, has flown off the racetrack, and McFadden is climbing out of the race car, and that is a great sign to see as James McFadden has climbed from the Roth Enterprises number 83 car and is talking to safety officials outside the racetrack in turn number four. The former teammates with Casey Kane Racing with Mike Kerb get together racing for the top spot in turns three and four and McFadden has taken a seat right there on the banking outside the fourth corner you see high limit racing officials are speaking with him and there is what is left of that Roth Enterprises number 83 car and his stretch of top tens in a row will come to an end here tonight at Salina High Bank Speedway we just hope that McFadden is okay we did see him climb from the car So now the safety officials will have to work to get that car up off the ground and get him back to the trailer. So with 10 laps in and 20 to go, your race leader will be Brad Sweet in car number 49. And Tony Laporta, we got an update for us down there? Yeah, thankfully I've got James, James McFadden right by me. James, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, mate. Uh that was a digger. I, had, uh, I thought it was over, and and then I uh, hit the ground three or four more times. So uh, not ideal, but you know, luckily we got really good safety gear. And yeah, I, I don't know. I just racing deal, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't really know. So 
it all happens pretty quick and um, I don't know if I crowded him or he got a big run or something. I just, we'll see. Um, but everyone back home, Zoe, Mav, I'm all good. We'll uh, live to fight another day. That is the best news possible, James. Thank you for talking to us. He was your pole sitter after winning the FK Rod Ends Dash. And I don't know if Nate can show you guys, but Chase, this car, I mean, I don't know how to say it without over-exaggerating, but it's every bit of 50 yards off the top of the racetrack over here. I mean, James McFadden absolutely flew off the top of this racetrack, but he is up, he is out, he is walking back, and according to him, he is okay. Yeah, that car flew in the air for a long time before it actually touched the ground when he left the surface over there in turn number four. We're gonna see a replay here uh, from Flow Racing. We'll see what exactly happened here. McFadden with the lead. Here comes Sweet with a run to the inside. So McFadden, I mean, just trying to run the middle there, and maybe Brad kind of missed the bottom a little bit, but you see what I'm talking about. When McFadden leaves the track, it takes, I mean, what seems like an eternity for him to hit the ground again, just because of the unbelievable amount of banking that there is here at Salina High Bank Speedway. When he cleared that, uh, it went for a long time until he actually landed. And there you see McFadden. Uh, as he said, he's all right. He's walking back to the trailer. Unfortunately for uh, McFadden, his, his wife and child not here in the States right now. They are back home in Australia. And uh, they are definitely watching tonight on Flow Racing. So he let them know that he is okay. There's Brent Ventura, the crew chief on the car. They've got some work to do before we come back to action Tuesday at Riverside International Speedway in West Memphis, Arkansas. So with 10 laps complete, uh, Brad Sweet is the race leader, followed by Rico Abreu in second. Brent Marks runs in third. Fourth is the 21 of Brian Brown, and fifth is the 13 of Justin Peck. Sixth, how about this? Tanner Holmes up to the sixth position in car number 18T. Seventh is Zeb Wise. Eighth is Jacob Allen, and ninth is Casey Kane. Tenth is Cy Lynch. The Durst Dice Roll drivers lost a couple positions here on the opening laps of this race. Tony, you got more for us down there? Yeah, walking back, actually, Nate, our wireless camera operator, caught a look at the 18T's uh, nose wing, Tanner Holmes, and he asked me, he goes, does that look bent to you? And we came over to get a closer look, and yes, in fact, it does look uh, bent. Not the nose wing itself, actually the mounting bracket down that runs into the frame. Uh, not broken, at least not from the vantage point I had, but he, uh, Tanner actually was able to explain it to us. He said he just was trying to slow down as quick as he could and actually got in to the back of Justin Peck, who he was parked next to there during the red flag. So I do not believe that mounting bracket is broken, but it is skewed back quite a bit. It's that left side mounting bracket, Chase. So the nose wing on the 18T at Tanner Holmes cocked just a bit back and to the side on the left end. Well, we'll see if that nose wing can hang on for the rest of this race. Obviously, they are going very, very fast around here, so that downforce with it being twisted like that might ruin it. We'll see what happens. Another different replay from the infield in turn number three. This should be a good look at it here. And you will just see McFadden leave stage left. Bye-bye. He's gone. Uh, he just leaves the screen right there and just goes over the side of the racetrack. And it looks like Sweet does get tight right there. You could see him kind of maybe turn the wheel straight, maybe a little bit left. And he notices that he is going to get into McFadden as he tried to hit the bottom and maybe just kind of misjudged it a little bit there. You can leave the Frozen Farmer pick pint. The banking might be too much. I don't think the pick pint is going to be able to stay up. And so he ran it back into the infield. And so drivers will have to just do normal uh, you know, pick their lanes normal. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, that's exactly what Kubota High Limit Racing official Cody Hewson just told me. He went up there on the front straightaway to try to set up the Frozen Farmer pick pint. And it just it was, it was toppling over every time he tried to get it set up. So that hopefully shows folks a bit of a visual representation as to how banked this place really is even on the straightaways no doubt about it here we go 10 laps complete 20 to go here at salina high bank speedway brad sweet showing the way rico abru now in second abru looking for win number one of 2024 he gets a great restart right there alongside of brad sweet as they work back into turn number one sweet runs the middle gets the cushion on the exit brent marks momentarily takes second from the 24 of Rico Abreu. We'll see if Marks has the bottom wired. It looks like off a of turn number four, and it's very good. He pulls up alongside the 24 car down the front straightaway, cannot make the pass. He might have it this time. They're three wide for the lead off a of turn number two. A three car battle for the top spot here at Salina High Bank Speedway. And Brent Marks, no, he's not gonna have it. Now Rico on the back bumper of Brad Sweet down the front straightaway. Rico works back to the outside. Sweet runs the middle and Marks runs the top. Three different lines of racing as they work through 
position one and two. Great race going on for fourth as well between Zeb Wise, Tanner Holmes, and Brian Brown. Brad Sweet now stretching it out a little bit here as Brent Marks and Rico try and settle it amongst themselves for that second position. Marks has it down the back straightaway. Brent Marks up to second. Rico trying to peek back to the inside and turns one and two. Car around and off the track. I believe red flag waving. Yes, I cannot tell. I believe that is Brenham Crouch, the car that is upside down. Yes, that is the case. And he is way out of the racetrack. He is out of the car, ladies and gentlemen. Brenham Crouch is okay. He is walking away from the race car as he has flipped out of the park into turn number one. And safety officials are on the scene over there to make sure that everything is okay with Brenham. You see him take the helmet off right there, but that car definitely looks a little crunched over there. So... A red flag on lap 10, and now a red flag three laps later here on lap number 13. And it sounds like from Kubota High Limit Racing officials that we will go single file restarts for the remainder of this race. Single file restarts for the remainder of this race due to the track conditions. As they continue to work to get Brenham Crouch's car picked up out of that area over there and take him back over to the pits. So Brad Sweet shows the way. Brent Marks now into the second position in car number 19, and he looks extremely good on the very inside of the speedway. Rico Abreu is in third, Brian Brown in fourth, Zeb Wise in fifth, and we talked a lot about Tanner Holmes right before that green flag run, and we were wondering if that was going to affect the handling. I think it almost made him look better right there. He was in fourth for a moment uh, during that battle, so he looks all right. Justin Peck in seventh, Casey Kane is eighth, Jacob Allen in ninth, and then you've got Dominic Selzy. He is in the 10th position. Tyler Courtney, the Kubota Highland Racing points leader, started back in 21st in this race, and now he is up to the 11th spot in car number 7 BC. Corey Day, the winner of the winner's performance B-Main, is up to 15th after starting back in 19th. So those two drivers, Tyler Courtney and Corey Day, first and third in points, trying to make their way forward. Sunshine looks pretty solid so far in this one. So getting the number one car picked up off of the racetrack. And Tony, I'm sure you got an update for us down there. Yeah, uh, they're hoisting that number one. You can see from the drone shot over there again how far the car made it off of the racing service. But uh, Brenham Crouch, not with his race car anymore. He got picked up by a member, I believe, of the Crouch Motorsports team. And he caught the quad back to the pit area. So uh, as you said, you saw it on the shot. He was up. He was out of the car. And he's already back to the trailer. So wanted to hear more from him in a little bit. But uh, Burnham Crouch back to the trailer early. Sounds like we've got a replay coming up here, Tony. We'll see what happened to Brenham Crouch. It's going to be from our drone shot outside of turn number one. So the drone is in, oh, uh, sorry, top left. Or sorry, so the drone, and he's going to go off in turn number one, I believe, this time by right. Oh, I missed. Oh, wow, I was looking at the wrong part of the screen there. I'm kind of kind of confused as to where we were at as far as the drone goes. We'll, we'll take another look at it. I'm sure the people at home uh, probably saw it, but I'm, I'm half blind up here, I guess. I've been looking at my screen too much, a little bright in here, so I must have missed it. But uh, we'll replay it one more time, and, and we'll see what happened to Brenham Crouch. But uh, nonetheless, he is out of this race, out of the car. He is okay, heading back to the trailer. Here is that replay once again. So bottom left, bottom left of your screen right here, and Brenham Crouch... And here he goes. So he just, it looks like he almost forgot to turn or something. I feel like something had to break right there. I mean, I, Brandon Crouch uh, was running pretty decent right there. He was in 13th position. And it, I mean, right there, it just looks like he forgot to turn and flew off the track. I would have to believe that something broke there in the steering and did not allow him to make the corner there. And he goes for a little bit of a ride off the exit there as Parker Price Miller you take a look at him right there he is currently in the 14th position after starting in 11th for this feature so nearly halfway through this race 13 complete 17 to go Brad Sweet Brent Marks Rico Abreu Brian Brown and Zeb Wise Zeb's having a good run he's up to fifth after starting back in the 10th position so definitely a lot of movers here in this one
making sure our lineup is correct, and it is. So the HendrickCars.com pace truck will pull off the racetrack into the infield. We will go green next time by here at Salina High Bank Speedway. Brad Sweet takes the Napa 49 down to the inside for this restart. And we are back underway. Brent Marks, a great restart right there. Stays within a car length of Napa 49 cars. They went back into turn number one. Sweet and Marks run the bottom. Rico tries the top, and it's going to cost him as Brian Brown circled the bottom real nice right there in one and two. He moves into the third spot. The Casey is 21. Now he gets driven around on the outside by Rico Abreu. So Abreu was fourth, and then he was third for about a half a lap there, back in the podium position for Rico. And that would be the first podium of the season if Rico could finish right there right now. That time by 15 in and 15 to go for Brad Sweet. Back in the field, Tyler Courtney and Corey Day going at it right outside of that top 10 position. Courtney runs the bottom eight and Day's on the top. Corey Eliason also making his way towards the front in the car number eight. Casey Kane sideways off a of turn number four. Gives up two positions. Tyler Courtney and Justin Peck go, both go by him. Brad Sweet showing the way. Maybe 10 or so car lengths over the 19 of Brent Marks, and traffic is still quite a ways away for the car number 49 of Brad Sweet. Justin Peck and Tyler Courtney side by side down the front straightaway. They are racing for the eighth position. So Tyler Courtney from 20th up to eighth now in car number seven BC. The next car in his sight line is the 18T of Tanner Holmes and the number one A of Jacob Allen. Tyler Courtney underneath the Tanner Holmes down the front straightaway. And Tyler Courtney's got the seventh spot for a moment. Can't make it past him quite yet. Now he knows the head down the back straightaway. Tyler Courtney now up to seventh from 20th. A lot of drivers now migrating to the inside of the racetrack in turns one and two. We'll see what Brad Sweet does now as he has caught some heavy lap traffic. Jace Park and Blake Hahn right in front of him. And Brad Sweet will split between the two of them. Gets by Jace Park. Great move right there from the five-time World of Outlaws champion. Nine laps to go this time by for Brad Sweet. It looks like Brent Marks has nothing for him here as Sweet is making his way through traffic very easily right now. Good race going on for this fourth position. Zeb Wise and Brian Brown. And Brian Brown trying to put a move on Zeb Wise right there. It might work out for him. He tapped the brake getting into the corner. They may have made a little contact right there off of turn number two. Here comes the 7BC into the picture as well. Tyler Courtney from 20th and now looking for P6 down the front straightaway. Tyler Courtney from way in the back of the field gets by Jacob Allen, gets by Brian Brown, and Tyler Courtney's down into the top five. Tyler Courtney absolutely ripping the lip off of turn number four to get by two cars the last time by the line. Sunshine now working on the 26 of Zeb Wise, and he's going to pass him down the back straightaway. It's Tyler Courtney now up to fourth. Zeb says no for now. Slides up in front of him, takes the air off the nose. Tyler Courtney not able to cross underneath him, and Zeb Wise still has fourth down the front stretch. Zeb Wise still with fourth. Courtney now falls back a couple of car lengths to that number 26 machine. Brad Sweet. His lead has grown to a pretty sizable margin right now by over a straightaway over the 19 car of Brent Marks. Four laps to go this time by the line. Now Sweet trying to find a way by the 5T of Ryan Timms and the 9P of Parker Price Miller. Sweet loses a lot of ground that time by off of turn number two, but I don't think Brent Marks is going to be close enough for that to really affect him. Marks trying to get by Spencer Basin, and now now to the inside of the 2KS and Chase Randall to get two cars less between himself and the 49 of Brad Sweet. Car pulling into the infield, the 23 of Garrett Williamson, and I think he hit the tractor tire because the, full, the front end's folded up on the 23 car. White flag next time by for Brad Sweet. Brent Marks has definitely closed the gap, but he's going to need a huge mistake from Brad Sweet here on the final lap if he wants any shot at winning this thing. White flag, one to go for Brad Sweet. Sweet still behind the 5T of Ryan Sims. Brett Marks works to the outside. He's going to need a monster run. It's not going to happen as they work down the... Oh, we got a problem. Car off the pace. The caution's out. It looks like Chase Randall in turn number two. The TKS Motorsports car. I think he might have blown a right rear tire there. I saw a lot of debris. I saw something fly up in the air right here by the flag stand. I was wondering if it was mud, but it was definitely a tire. The 2KS, Chase Randall, there you see some of the debris right there on the front straightaway. And even some landed right here next to the flag stand on the grandstand side of the fence. 
Chase Randall drawing the caution. This is actually Tony Laporte. This is two nights in a row with a caution on the white flag lap. We're going to have a green white checkered finish to this one. Kubota High Limit Racing. We know drama. Can you believe it, Chase? Same scenario as last night. Brad Sweet sitting in the catbird seat. I don't even know what a catbird is, but he's leading. He's staring down a victory, his second. And your trend that you pointed out of a driver getting his first win of the season and then immediately doubling up and getting a victory the very next race seemed very likely for Brad Sweet up until that yellow but Brent Marks, he's been so fast all night here. And you've got Rico Abreu, Jacob Allen, Zeb Weiss, Tyler Courtney. This thing is definitely not over. Yeah, I think Brent Marks definitely has a shot here at Brad Sweet. And whatever line Sweet goes to here on the restart into turn number one, expect the 19 of Marks to go to that opposite lane. He was definitely closing in there those last couple of laps, albeit he was in traffic. Both Sweet and Marks were in traffic, so it maybe held up the 49 car a little bit there. But I would be willing to bet that the 19 maybe had similar speed. Here's a replay from the speed shot on the front straightaway. Oh, man. Great shot right there from the guys at Flow Racing to get that on the cameras. Uh, Chase Randall just going down the front stretch, loses the right rear Hoosier, and his night will come to an end. He was running 17th at the time. We're going green the next time by. Going green the next time by. Garrett Williamson will stay in the infield. So a green-white checkered finish to end the Salina Highbank Speedway race here with Kubota High Limit Racing. Can Brent Marks put a move on Brad Sweet here to steal the win on a late race restart? Green flag comes back out. Marks does get a good start. Where does he go into turn number one? Sweet goes to the bottom, and Marks immediately to the top. He gets a good run down the back straightaway. This time by, they'll come to the white, and Brent Marks tries to throw a slider at Brad Sweet for the top spot, comes up short, and Sweet will lead at the white flag. Brent Marks gave it all he had right there, but came up short. A close call for Sweet as he nearly caught the right rear tire of the M&M Painting and Construction number 19. Off of turn number four, Brad Sweet two in a row with Kubota High Limit Racing. Brent Marks second, Rico Avery third, fourth goes to Jacob Allen, and fifth from 21st, Tyler Courtney inside the top five. Wowzers, good stuff there at the end. Brent Marks made it very interesting, tried all he could to get by. The five-time World of Outlaws champion came up just a little bit short on that slider, and he will end up with a second-place result here tonight at the Salina High Bank Speedway. Whiskey Myers, Victory Lane is where we find the big cat, Brad Sweet, back-to-back -back nights. Ladies and gentlemen, he's your winner! Brad Sweet climbs on top of the wing and he'll make his way down here in Whiskey Myers Victory Lane to come talk to us. So, Brad, crazy trend. When you win with Kubota High Limit Racing, it seems like you're in a pretty good spot to go back to back and that's exactly what you've done. First of all, tell me about the pace of that race. Yeah, first thing I want to say is uh, sorry to James McFadden there. We, You never like to run into a guy when you're racing for the lead. I had a good car and Honestly, just, I guess, misjudged him, you know, because I, I just flat ran into him. So apologies to him. I uh, never want to race another, uh, you know, especially a friend of mine. But anyway, a uh, Nap Auto Parts car was, was really good. I was honestly biding my time there with James and, and trying to figure out uh, the lines to get through lap traffic. It was just tricky. And then the bottom kind of came in down here in one and two. So uh, Brent showed me that. And I just kind of, when you're the leader, sometimes you just don't know where to be. So tried to move around and, and tried to find the right lines. And, you know, two nights in a row, the, the yellow comes out on the white flag. I don't know if it's good or bad because you never know what, the, what lead you have or, or whatnot. But, um, yeah, these guys, they really turned it around. We were struggling there for a few races. And, and right now I feel like the car's phenomenal and it gets better throughout the race. So uh, whatever they figured out, uh, I'm excited and looking forward to the next few races. You hit the nail on the head. The yellow flag comes out two nights in a row now while you're leading and you've seen the white flag. So I got to ask, what goes through your mind? How do you decide where to put your car when that green-white checkered comes out? Yeah, I just I try to stay really calm and, and just try to really pay attention. Um, you know, I mean, you're, you're racing through the run, so you kind of know where the lap cars, you know, had made speed. I definitely knew I was faster. You know, it was clear to me that I was faster. Uh, in three and four on the top, I could really make some speed up there. But 
Uh, one and two is a little confusing, right? You just you don't know you know how good the bottom's going to be on the restart, and a guy could build momentum, you know, especially for a two-lap run. So um, I just try my best. I obviously saw the slider come across me over there, and uh, luckily I had, I'd entered with enough speed to, to clear it, and uh, that made me feel a little better because I knew I came to the the white with some good speed and uh, just try to protect and hit the bottom the best I could and, and make one last lap. So. Uh, just uh, like I said, it was a good win. Hated we got into James, but I uh, want to say hi uh, to my wife and daughter back home. Savvy's watching, so I didn't say hi last night. Got in trouble, but thanks to all the fans for coming out and supporting us. Uh, it's a lot of fun racing here at Salina. You got a great crowd here, and last question, you get to choose where $1,000 goes as you are a high roller who scored a victory here in 2024. You told us last night, I feel like you might be sticking with it. Where's that $1,000 going tonight? Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the Shriners Hospital, so uh, we'll, we'll keep donating to them hopefully all year long. Well, as a fellow Shriners patient, that's pretty cool, Brad. Ladies and gentlemen, back-to-back -back checks for the big cat, Brad Sweet. Back-to-back -back jacks for Brad Sweet, back-to-back -back trips to the podium for this driver right here, Brent Marks. I know you'd rather be standing up there on the top step of the podium in Whiskey Myers Victory Lane. You had a great shot at it. Tell me about those last couple laps battling with Brad. Yeah, I gave it my all there at the end, and uh, we just lost a little bit too much air pressure in the left rear under those couple red flags, and uh, once we got rolling, I was just banging the framer off the track really hard on entry, and and uh, got a run on them down the back stretch there, and I felt like that was my only opportunity. So I drove it in really hard in the three, but it was just uh, shearing across the track on me there, and I just wasn't able to get up quick enough to um, um, you know, get in front of Brad there. So um, guys are really good, you know, and uh, you know, to finish second to, to Brad is um, definitely you know, we're, we're, doing, we're doing something right. So I'm really proud of this whole team. They're just uh, working very hard to get our car better, and, um, you know, we're not, uh, I feel like we're about a fourth to sixth place car and, you know, we need to be top three every night to uh, contend for this championship and uh, tonight it was a step in the right direction and with uh, the changes that we've made and I'm um, just looking forward to, um, you know, what, what's, uh, what the future holds. So, you know, I just want to thank all the fans for coming out tonight and showing the support for our series and, you know, it was great to see. Um, you know, packed house here at Salina, and it's been a while since I've been here. I was here back in 2018 with the uh, the Outlaws, and um, you know, had a blast here again tonight. So hopefully, we get to come back next year. And um, just want to thank all our partners on Murray Marks Motorsports Car, um, McGrewBid.com, m and Painting Construction, Alan Murray and his family, Baps Paints, Livewire Customs, Fredericksburg Eagle Hotel. Um, just you know, everybody that uh, put, pours their heart and soul into this team. I just really appreciate it. Third trip to the podium, second second place finish of the year. Brent Marks with another really good run here tonight at the Salina High Banks. And Rico Abreu, he comes home in third. Now, Rico, it's a lazy question because I just asked it to Brent, but I got to ask you, that green-white checker battle, you and Jacob Allen were going back and forth with each other. How fun is it to race with a guy like that for the kind of prestige we're battling for here? Definitely. Uh, it's, you know, super respectable racing with Jake, um, you know, and, and knowing that the lane's there for you on the outside, you know, just, um, you know, really focus this week on not putting us in bad positions. These guys, uh, you know, Ricky, Zach, and Brady have been doing an amazing job with, uh, you know, my race car, and it's just fine tuning things. And, um, you know, it's uh, this format's definitely been unique to us to, to, to grasp position in the dashes and get into those dashes. And I feel like we're just on the verge of, uh, of getting in off qualifying times, um, you know, where, where it allows things to flow a lot easier. So, um, you know, right now we're being put in position where we must win heat races. And, um, you know, that makes the starts very, very intense. But um, just hats off to my partners, all you fans, man, this is um, really, really cool to race in Oklahoma and, um, you know, race on some really cool tracks, unique tracks. Um, I haven't been here in, in 10 years or so. And this facility is unbelievable, you know, world class. So we're very fortunate to come here and race and, um, you know, got arc zone suit on um you know thank you jim watson you know for what he does um you know sending welding material and welding product material all over the country and um to reach out to us and be a part of our team uh, is is pretty unbelievable um for these partners to um support sprint car racing that um you know have um a passion for motorsports or um you know just a, a love for the sport so um you know it's just like i said it's unbelievable to race in front of the best fans in the world
Rico Abreu comes home in third place here tonight. And let's show these fans off a little bit as we get ready to wrap up here on the Salina High Banks. Rico said it, Chase. This place is a world-class facility, and the fans showed up here tonight. You could hear them cheering the drivers on during the interviews. You could hear them cheering them on during that race. It was such good action out there for $12,000 to win. Brad Sweet gets the job done. He continues that trend you talked about of going back-to-back -back after scoring his first win of the season.